thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to do a dream catcher. The first thing you need is a hoop. You can get these generally anywhere. They lots of different dollar stores carry them. Um, different craft stores as well. They come in all sorts of different sizes, but today we're going to be doing one this size, which makes, you know, a medium sized dream catcher. This one is one of the large dream catchers that I've done here, and it features labradorite stones. And you can also do them in really small ones. The smallest sizes we do generally are this big. You can make earrings as well. Same kind of principle. Little difficult working with something so small, but very similar process. This is another small one. Now, one of the best things I like to do for the small size is you can generally find bracelets like these here, or like these at thrift stores, fairly cheap. They're made for very small, small wrists. This one's slightly bigger and they're just metal hoops. So I find it's the perfect thing to repurpose to make a dream catcher. Um, these ones are a little thin, so you want to be careful while you're wrapping it, but it does make a very cute, cute dream catcher. Uh, these ones are done with the silver one. Sweet. Now, one of the other ways I like to repurpose is you can use pieces of leather that are just scrap pieces of leather. So if you have something made out of leather that is either worn out or it's getting kind of holy, you can just take the fabric. Or if you find somebody who like makes shoes or moccasins or that type of things and they end up with like little pieces of fabric. Um, one of the best ways to get leather is by repurposing it this way and you would just cut it just like there in thin little strips or you can buy spools like this craft stores uh, sometimes you can find little kits at at, uh, at dollar stores or you know cheap stores like that um, they generally will come with a leather or suede thing like this. Um, this was done in suede, kind of looks a little fuzzier than, than the plain leather. Um, this one was actually done in a scrap leather that I used. It's like a suede kind of leather. But yeah, so whether you're using the pre-made or whether you're using a repurposed leather doesn't matter, whatever your preference is. So, when you have all your tools, what you're going to need to start is the sinew, the ring, and some glue. Now, I like to use Gorilla Gel just because it's a little difficult with the straight liquid crazy glue. Um, some people, they, they will just melt wax and use a little bit of wax on it or um, you know things like that Mo mostly people use glue or they'll melt a bit of, of uh, hot glue use that but just my preference is to use the Gorilla Gel and that is because once you get it all to the tip Also, you don't want to shake it like this if you have the liquid, <laughs> not with the lid off. But here we go. It's starting to come off. And you just put a little bit of the gel on the ring. And as you see, because it's the gel, it's not going anywhere. 
<laughs> it's not getting all over the place. You don't have to worry about it running down the circle because that is a concern and that does happen. <laughs> that liquid crazy glues will just start running down the circle and onto your hand. Um, that's why I prefer the gel for this. Now, you take this, the leatherette, and you just press it down with your finger. You want to be careful not to put your finger in the glue, like I do often, very often. Uh, best way to get off the crazy glue if you do get it on is actually just soak your hand in water for a very long time. <laughs> But yeah, and then you just take it and you wanna circle it around and pull it. Now once you have, you know, four or five of the circles, um, your glue will be dry and now it holds really well. So you can move it around while you're wrapping. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure it's fairly close to each other. You don't want a lot of gaps in it so if you can see just every once in a while to give it like a little bit of a shove so that you don't get a whole bunch of gaps because you don't want it too loose um a lot of the times you can make it too loose uh this one i will show you i was running out of the leatherette and so towards the end i wasn't able to push it in as tight as i wanted to um so it does end up a little loose and you can generally see it's a little loose but I mean it doesn't look bad um, just more of a personal preference to squeeze it tight <laughs> but once you start wrapping you just keep going till you've done the whole circle now it's important to note a couple of things that you want to do one of them is if it's all loose like this that's not really good so you can just run your fingers along it and twist it and tighten it up because you want a nice tight weave I, I find that always looks the best and like I said push them up together not on top of each other you, you have to be careful not to wrap on top of it because then it's it's gonna look bulky and, and you're gonna have a weird spot um, so yeah just try and tighten it as you go and Another important thing to remember is you want to make sure not to twist your cord. So when you're lying uh, or when you're laying it, you want it to lay flat. So when you go like that, just make sure that it doesn't twist or have any kinks or anything and you can just keep spinning it around and then you can tighten it up just every so often push it down on top of each other or on top of itself and then just twist it tight with your fingers pull it tight now that way even if you let go because if you let go yeah it sort of gets loose like that but you can still do the same thing where if you just twist it with your fingers a little bit wrap it around it's almost like rewrapping portions of it um, but that way if you need to put it down when you're in the middle of it you can you don't have to worry about the whole thing unraveling um, just make sure you don't like twist your cord because if you twist your cord it's gonna it's not gonna lay flat and it's gonna look a little weird careful it goes by quite easily and painlessly so you can tighten it up nicely and then it lies quite flat without really any gaps or anything in it and that's where you're going to get your best color results um, now generally the suede you can get it in a wide range of colors depending on where you go um, you know certain dollar stores and stuff they might have a couple of colors but if you find a specialty bead shop or um, a specialty craft store you can generally find quite a few different color choices of the leather um, 
the best place we've found is actually a local bead store. Unfortunately, it's not chain, so unless you live in Victoria, you probably won't be able to get it from them. Um, but there's a bead store downtown that sells a wide range of colors. We have this dark blue, the light purple. They have many different kinds of purple, and I even have a special request from a customer to match her bedroom decor. She showed me a picture of the bedroom decor and her nail polish matched it as well. So she asked me to go find this color. And because she was able to tell me the exact color, um, I was able to compare it and get it. So this is going to become a special ordered dream catcher in this color. So yeah. If, you, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where you can find a craft store that sells colors, then consider yourself lucky. It doesn't always happen. Um, but you can also buy them online. I'm sure there are many different websites that you can shop from that do the different colors. But whether you do it in black like this, or if you do it in the basic off-white, not quite beige, but more of an off-white. Um, those are going to look great as well. <laughs> those are typically the colors that you'll find, though, or the black and the off-white. Um, but if you can find them, there's a whole range of different colors that you can choose from, and you can match any decor. So that being said, it might be worth getting out there and seeing if you have anything in your local area because if you do generally you get the best prices because you know they might have a couple of meters left of this color and they generally are not completely identical from spool to spool they try but they're not always exactly the same um, so usually if they have just like a little bit left of a spool they'll sell a couple, couple of meters for fairly reasonable price. Um, generally, at the place we get it, you can buy it in five yards or you can buy the whole spool. One of these costs about 20 bucks, um, which for us is worth it because we make a lot of dream catchers. So generally, if we find a color that people really like, then those are the ones that we buy a lot of. Um, this one I bought five yards of to make sure that I had enough to do exactly what I was doing. Um, I'm also going to add a hanger and some tassels coming down. So, I mean, it doesn't take the whole five yards for the ring, but it could for the end product. So, something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing a large one, if you're going to be doing a small one, I think I used a meter or a yard. Um, for this one and then I ran out uh, so I accessorized it with a black one and I'm gonna have the black leatherette hang down and I'm gonna coordinate the stones to look good with both colors um, that's something we like to do use not just one color but two colors or several colors we've done a few dream catchers that are quite popular with a variety of different colors especially if you're using the repurposed leather that works really well to do different colors ones and you can do rainbow ones you can do whatever you want I've made one where I did an ocean theme and 90% of it was covered in blue and then the last little bit was covered in white and it had seashells and it was very very beautiful so don't worry too much if you find out oh my goodness I am 90% of the way through the hoop and I've run out of leather. <laughs> it's not a huge deal. You can generally come up with something to do with it. But if you want the whole thing the same color, try and make sure you have enough. And if you look, you should be able to find a variety of different colors that you can use. And it doesn't always have to be leather, especially if you're vegan and you don't want to use a leather or a leather-like product. You can use fabrics. We've done that where we've snipped them really thin about a half an inch or less 
and then wrapped it in the fabric and we've just left it raw edge fabric and they turn out fantastic. We did that first Canada 150. We did some red and white ones out of the fabric like that. So you can use a lot of different things, especially if you don't like using animal products. Um, something worth mentioning though, when you go for sinew, which is what we use in the center part here to do it. Typically sinew is made from meat. It is the long white strands you can find in the muscle and that would have been what was used originally. If you buy it in the store, that's not what you're getting. This is a thread. It's called artificial sinew. It's made to look like the sinew did, um, but it's a waxed thread. So it is completely vegan friendly. Unless it uses beeswax, might wanna check on that to ensure if you are vegan and you don't want any animal products, make sure it doesn't contain beeswax but I believe it's a paraffin type wax or something similar that they use on this. So it is vegan friendly, but the leather is not. There are all alternatives that you can use though. So when you're wrapping, remember, don't twist. Make sure it is well placed. If it's not as tight, it does still look good but you get a more solid color coverage. And because the hoops are typically made out of brass, it is a bright metal and it is reflective. So if you have direct sunlight on your Dreamcatcher and it's loose, you are going to see parts of the metals at certain times. Um, so something to be aware of while you're wrapping. Okay, so here we are. We've reached the end and it is where you're finally sealing it off, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough uh, of the leather to sit firmly in the space and meet up with your starting section. So I'm going to clip it right out there and it'll meet up firmly with my section if I turn it like that, you can see. Um, and then that way, you don't have any cracks or holes. I'm gonna take some scissors and just make sure you get the exact spot you want and snip it. Now, what we're gonna do here I might have left a little bit of tail on there. You're gonna take more of your glue, whatever glue it is you choose to use. And then you're just gonna place a dot sort of in the crack just a little bit. You don't want too much, otherwise when you pull it tight, it is gonna spill out the side and get on you, but then you tuck the flap into the space so it meets up flush with the beginning. Now, when you put your beginning piece, it is good to put it on just a little bit of an angle so that when you wrap around and meet it, you can have that one at just a little bit of an angle too. That way it's not flat. And if you angle both pieces, they meet a little bit nicer and you get a better finished product. But once that's dry, we are going to have a full ring nicely wrapped. Simple. Okay, so now that we are done the ring, we need to choose what we're going to put in it. Now, you don't always have to put things in it, like I've done here. Um, 
I just find that it looks really nice and that's kind of what we like to do. As I said, we add crystals to them. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, you want to add your choice before you start wrapping with your sinew, of course. Um, so, you know, you can pick basically any beads that'll work, they'll work for you. Um, you know, whether they're like a small bead or a larger bead and pick a complementary color or a stone that has a benefit that you're looking for. Um, for this one, I chose these small, these small ones here. They're a bead similar to turquoise in look. I can't remember the name right now, but perhaps I can link that down below. Um, and so I'm going to pick some of those to put it on the sinew. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your sinew and take your beads and you just put them on. And you just do that for however many beads you want, really. Um, the larger the dream catcher, of course, the more you could use. Um, small ones I generally like to keep around, you know, four or five, six at most. If they're smaller beads, you can generally go a bit more. Uh, bigger, you go less. Looks like it's crowded. Um, for the really big beads, I would generally only use three for a small one. Um, but this is a medium sized one, so I think I'm gonna go for about 10 or 12. I generally like to keep um, in, in groups of three, simply because groups of three usually look the best aesthetically when you're doing something. Um, you know, it just it looks the most aesthetically appealing. Um, some people like to be symmetrical, so they like to keep even numbers. And I generally do like to keep even numbers, but I'll keep it an even amount of three. Um, so I go with six or, you know, twelve. You know. But it's really up to you how many you want. Just something that'll look right. Um, you want to add it to your sinew ahead of time because once you've started, it it's really difficult to add it onto the sinew because you're not going to want to cut it until you're near done. You want to leave it on the spool. So the more you do it, the more you'll kind of figure out what number is right for for how you like it to look. You can always um, you could always end up taking some off if you wanted to. Um, you know, when you get to it and you feel, oh, it's just, it's really busy. But at that point, you know how much sinew you need because you've done it. Or you're basically done it, so you could just take it out and uh, take off some of the rocks. And then redo it. Um, it's not hard to do the weave. Um, and you can do it relatively quickly once you get good at doing it. So, you know, if it doesn't look right, it's better to take it out and uh, and start again. It's kind of like knitting that way, because if you don't like how it looks, you're not going to be happy with it. And if you're making it for yourself, you want to be happy with it. If you're making it for somebody else and you think they're going to like it with all this all the extra stones, then perhaps you could leave it. But you know, you generally just go with what appeals to you. So it's really open that way. But when you get the amount of stones you want, I need two more, <laughs> you can begin wrapping, which is where the fun is really going to start. Now with the sinew, like I said, it's artificial sinew, so it's, it's not actually made out of animal. Um, once you got your beads on there, and I've got 12 then you just take it and I, I like to put it where you glued it because I'm going to cover that bit with, um, with the, the holder on the top 
and I take this new there and I put it directly over top of the merge so I put it on on that seam so that it just it, it makes sure everything is hidden when you when you place that and it makes sure that it can't unravel too um, it shouldn't because you've glued it but see I like to put it right on the seam covering it and then I just tie a knot just a regular knot you know I like Stick this through just a regular knot, you know, and I tie it twice or more sometimes if it looks like it's a little flimsy, but normally twice. Now, what I do is I sort of push that down because we'll deal with that when we finish. Um, that's when I'll be doing all the trimming. But now you're going to start your wrap. So what you do is you go over the hoop, so it looks like this, then you go through the hole. So over the, two, um, over the hoop, through the hole. And then you can either pull it tight, but I'd recommend not too tight, especially for the first row, because you're going to need the flexibility when you're working with it. Um, but you know, generally something like that's a little too loose usually want it around there and once you've done the first one right because we got that first one now you just keep going around now if you're wanting something sort of star shaped you're only going to want to do the the five points of course um, if you're wanting something with a lot more uh, going on in here then you're going to want more along the along the uh, hoop so basically how many times you go through it 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 is going to affect how many times or how how it looks in here when you're done so on this particular dream catcher i am holding it wrong here's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then back to the top. So that's how many I've done for this one to get this type of weave. Okay. And basically the the number is not going to change. You can do 11, you can do 12 if you want one that looks generally like this. Sorry, camera's over there the one that looks generally like this with a lot going on around here there's a lot of webbing if you want less of the weave then you do less points of course but also something that's sort of aesthetically up to you there's no real set number some people pick different numbers because it has different significance to them and and that's perfectly fine and some people really take the time and intricately plan out exactly how they want it to look when they're done um, and then they actually design it they'll use uh, I've seen people using um, the square paper the grid paper to plan out Dreamcatcher designs because he wanted the center to look very specific when he was done and he wanted the weave to be very specific so that's something you can plan on, you know, draw a circle on a paper and then connect all the different points, kind of like drawing a spider web. Um, and you can sort of plan out your design there. I generally don't like to do that. I just do what feels right um, for that particular piece. But it's really personal preference. So, you know, whether you plan ahead or whether you just wing it like I do, um, it's really about how you, you want it to look and, and how it feels right for you. So I'm going to go and I'm going to finish the first loop and then I'll show you how to do the second row. All right, so now that we've gone around, this one has 11 points so far. Then you go back to the first one and this is where I'm going to put the 12th point. 
right on top of the original. Oops, sorry. So now it looks like this. And we're going to start on the second row. So what you do is you take it and you sort of stretch it with your finger and you pull it down. It'll cause it to move and stretch out a little bit. And you want to stretch a bit. And then you put it through the loop and then through the bottom loop and you end up with it looking something like this. Now, that's just how it looks now. It looks all disheveled, but that's because you've pulled all the looseness from all the strings sort of into this one so you could get to it. Um, as you go through it, you're going to pull each of the strings. It then pops this one back into place. See how this one is now in place. And we can get through this one. So by the time you've gone around the circle, each of them will be pretty much the same tension. Um, and you can adjust that if you find that they're not looking how you want it to. But I find if you just go along and do them all, um, it usually works out pretty good and you don't really have to do any major wiggling. Um, but yeah, what's really going to affect how it looks is where this is. I, I try and put it towards the middle and then when we do the next one, I'm going to put the next row going to put the next row to the middle of this second layer, right? And that's how they're going to, it's how they're going to interconnect. Um, so I'm going to do the second, the second row now, and I will show you when we start the third row. But on the second row is generally when I start placing beads. Sometimes I do it on the first, sometimes I wait till much later, but normally it's around the second row and once again it depends how far in you want them to be on this one I didn't do it on the first row oh no sorry on this one I did do some on the first row and sometimes I wait till the second row this bead is here is on the second row this one is on the third row so generally where you want them to to gather is where you're gonna what row you're gonna want to put them on which makes sense right so if you want some by, by the, up by the hoop you put it on the first row if you want a little bit lower you put it on the second row there are times where i've left it and just done like a cluster in the middle and it looks kind of like a starburst or you know some sort of explosion like a firework um when you put a lot of them towards the middle. I think I've done about 15 or 16 towards the middle um, to make that kind of starburst fireworks effect. And I left the rest of it blank. So you can really uh, take time planning and figure out exactly how you want them laid. Um, and if you want to do like a starburst or if you want to do like a bunch in this corner or a bunch over here, you know, you would take that into mind when you're leaving them. And as I said, you need to concentrate on where, like what row you're going to want to put them on. Um, most of the time I'd like to do them just randomly so that it doesn't look too... Uh, manufactured. We, we like our items to look a certain way, um, like they weren't just made in a factory somewhere out of a pattern where they do the exact same thing every time. That's why n no two of our dream catchers are exactly alike, um, and we try and keep it that way. I mean, after a while you kind of got to recreate similar ones, but we try not to recreate exact ones. Um, so it really makes it like a one-of-a-kind type of piece. Also important to note, if you're using stones, like um, different 
gemstones, semi-precious stones, um, it's going to affect the finished product and therefore no to, pro no to dream catchers are going to look exactly the same um, based on the stones as well because they're all going to look slightly different even when they're formed into beads like this. The coloring is going to be different, the marbling is going to be different. Um, so that'll really impact how it looks. So when you are picking your crystals for your dream catcher, if you're wanting to put crystals in it like we do, then you might want to consider the different properties of all the different stones as well as the colors as well as the shapes because we don't always use round ones we can use flat ones as well um, this one's a double flat one you can kind of see that it's almost like two got stuck together or something I don't know why but this one is like a double wide <laughs> so um, yeah, and that would look different on your thing. The same kind of stone, except it would hang like that. So, shapes, size, colors, and of course the properties of the different stones are all gonna affect your choices. But, I will finish the second row and then show it to you again. Okay, so when you get to the end of the second, or of the third row, you can take it and at, at your point where you meet. On this one, I have taken layer one and two and put them together so it looks more seamless. Um, on this one, I didn't do that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, so I'll show you this one again. On this one, see you have all these points, but then there's this line here. On this one that we're making now, I've held these two strings together and done that and, and done them so that they they look like one and appear seamless. This one I haven't done that, um, and it's basically just because your one row is meeting your other row and and it's where you're at the beginning so it ends up looking like some things are overlapped uh, so that's what it looks like if you don't do that and on this one I'm doing that so on this one it appears now that there are two layers but in the end, I'm probably going to buy that of glue and it'll look more seamless um, on, on that. So it'll look like it's one piece. And as I said before, you know, with constant adjusting, that's how you're going to make your pieces. So this is going to be pulled down and it'll look more like that. <laughs> gotta get this camera angle ready right so it'll look more like that and they'll all look like the diamond points without the line through there um, I imagine people have different ways of covering that but with everyone I've, I've trained with or with everyone I've worked with um, they do it one of the two ways they'll either sort of double that top string or they won't and it looks like that so it's really how you want it to look but that is sort of how you get the seamless look so now that we've decided how we want to do that starting off row three is when you really have to pick that this is now row three and I am going to leave a bead. So all you do is you take it and you're just going to leave it right there. So when you pull this, pull this down, feed this through, take the rest of the beads with you and pull it through like this while leaving that bead there. And you 
can leave one bead, you can leave two beads if you'd like, because we're later going to go over it again. And of course, when we do the next line, this would have been the second layer. When we do the next line, we're going to go in the middle point. So you're going to have to pick whether to put this side on this side or on this side. So if you'd like, you can leave two and have one on each side of it, depending on what you prefer. But now we're just going to keep going. Like so. Everyone runs from me. Beating it through. We'll leave another beat here. Emily, it's no big deal. <laughs> you can turn it as you go. Now, it's a good works. idea to pull it's as you go. You don't need to pull it too, too tight, but you don't want it to end up too loose as the finished product because you're you know, otherwise they'll be saggy. They're not going to look right. But if you pull it and just sort of get that where you want it located, so you make sure it's not pulling to either side, and then move on to your next one. And continue like that throughout this row. So here we are. We've finished off the third row, and we're going to be doing a fourth. So here, got quite close, and I will show you what it looks like currently. Now, it's important to note that with different uh, First Nation or Native American beliefs, um, some believe that the dreams get stuck in the webs, and the good dreams make it through the holes in the web. Others believe that the bad dreams, they get lost in the web, right? But the good dreams oh my pass God. through the circle. The two of them together spamming their slows got so me. depending on what I you like or depending on what slow. your belief system is or how you want to think of it, the dreams can either be filtered through here, or they can pass through the center. So for the most part, we like to leave our centers open. Um, that's just the way we've always done it. So as you can see, this one is open, even though it's got this decoration hanging there. Normally we don't do quite so large decorations, but as you can see, there's still points for it to pass through the circle. Um, or you can end up making it so that the center is, is, is quite, quite, quite small, depending on how you like things to be. So there's both those options, and you're probably going to want to think of that when you're getting to it. But we are pretty close to done. I'm going to do another two rows and then we'll show you again. Here is where you have to decide, do you want your bead over here or do you want your bead over here? Either way is good. <laughs> See, over here or over here. Here I put it over here, here I put it over here. So you can stack them so that they go in lines, or you can randomly place them, he has to depending. Time, Always turn that the wrong way, depending on what you like. So, that no, is that. I will do two lines, and then we're going to think about how we want our center to be. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Now, as you can see, these ones I've done in a line pattern 
all the way around. It looks quite nice. And that is the 12 beads. Three, six, nine, twelve that I've used. Now the center looks rather large right now. This is about how you're going to want it. I'm going to do one more to sort of finish it off and then I'll show you how to send how to finish it off. Okay so I've done the last circle and now it's looking much more complete. At this point you want to pull it tight to sort of form it. And here you would either tie or not, or you can go into this next optional step, which we had, I'm not sure which group does it, but we had been informed this next step by a customer when we were in New Brunswick, which is our where we were originally based. We were in Wormokdo at the time. Like and ran away from me, I don't know. A not so pleasant customer informed us that our dream catchers were not finished and she demanded to know where we had trained. We explained that we were both from the Plains region. Mary is from um, from Ontario near the Manitoba border that is where her tribe is I and I trained with people in New Brunswick so either plain or not in New Brunswick in Manitoba in Winnipeg where I grew up so I, I worked with uh, Métis or Plains Cree mostly is, is the type of people I learned from so we didn't know this but she uh, informed us that to finish a dream catcher you want to I just used it to try to clear the wave. Leave it in back and forth. I'll reverse this so you can see it. Through all the holes. Just going in a straight line through them. So one pass through every hole that you've created. I gotta hold things differently when you're recording, but it's my first video, so please forgive me for constantly blocking with my hands. So, you want to go all the way back. This is where I originally started. This is where I'm finishing. And what you want to do is you want to firmly grasp it and pull everything into place, creating a center that looks like this. Now, you can pull it as tight or as loose as you want, depending on the size of center that you want, as you can see. And that sort of finishes the hole and creates a nice rounded look. Now, as I specified, this is an optional step. If you like the center completely rounded, um, that's how we were informed by our customer back in New Brunswick that um, people, I suppose, of that area typically make it. So that you have it perfectly round. Now, if you don't want it perfectly round, if you like the more natural, um, Center. This one I have not done it on. Oh, it's backwards. This one I have not done it on. So as you see, it's not completely round in the center. And that is okay. It's, again, a personal preference. So, sometimes I create it like that, and sometimes I do the optional finishing step to create that perfect hole in the center. Now, once you've done that, you 
don't want to go through the middle and then through that final hole again to create your knot. And then I like to pass it. See, this is where I had tied the knot. I like to pass it through the one okay. next Tell to it, one back through the one you where you had tied the original knot, and like so, and then pull it tight. And once I've done that, it is quite firmly tied in that tightened position, as you can see, and it's not going anywhere. Now you can knot it a few times if you f if you feel that's necessary. Generally, I just yeah, do it those two I times like this. that, <laughs> and then I pass it one final time through the hole right there. <coughs> And this is where I'm going to place my glue. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have it like so, so it sort of loops around. Now the knot, if you can see it, the knot is right here, okay, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my glue. And I'm going to place some directly on the knot, on the knot side. It should be pushing And I'm going to work it in there a bit because I use the gel. If you use the liquid, it'll get right in there, right away. Then I pull this to the back. And I place a little bit of glue there. And then I flatten it to the back, which I will show you right now. So this is a string, and I've taken it along the back, and I've flattened it. Now there's a bit of glue there, so you want to just take a bit off. <coughs> you can use a cloth if you're fast, or you can use a nail, piece of metal. Generally, that's what I use, a scrap piece of metal. And then you take it and you give it a snip close to there. I smoothed it with my finger. And now you can see it is right here. And it is completely smooth looking on both sides of the dream catcher. So you're not going to have any tattered ends that are going to be showing. Now up here we do have <coughs> we do have this slight tail still right here where we started. Now that I'm going to firm it along the sinew because sinew likes to stick to itself because it is waxed. So you can rub it in there like so. We to get the tail together. in there. Still bothering. Um, sometimes it's waxed enough that it'll stick like that, but the wax will eventually dry out. So I place a bit of glue on it, which I then, sort of with the applicator tip, it's like now spread it that little dot into it and make it solid right there. One rock so, and by doing that, you now have, oops, sorry, you now have it completely finished without seeing the tail at all, and it's not going to come off. So, with the knots and the glue that we've already done, Are you it kidding me? shouldn't come loose oh anyway, but... I like to smooth that in there so that it's trapped in there. And also when we add the loop, 
we don't really want it to come loose when we do that because then it shows. And if you haven't glued it, it can work loose over time because as I said, it is a waxed product, right? And the wax will dry out over time. <coughs> so at this point, I then pass it through, pass through a piece of the, uh, the leatherette or the suede rope where you want to hang it. You generally want to leave a good amount to hang with just so that it hangs nicely and we're also going to tie it so we're going to need a little bit extra for that. Now I give it a snip. One of the things that we like to do to finish off our dream catchers, a lot of the times we'll place a bead up here. You can use either, you know, either stone beads or the crystal beads like you've used in it, fish. or something bigger depending on what will fit in the leather. See, these ones are not going to fit on the leather. You can go around that by taking a bit of sinew drop the bead. <laughs> you can take a bit of sinew and tie the bead onto the spot like that. Which is what I'm going to do this time. Or you can use the larger beads, especially the ones for the Pandora style bracelets. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. And if you have those, they can slip quite easily on here. Any of the wide fold beads will do that. <coughs> and then you can firmly have it done there. So I will attach them. Now once you have your upper decoration in place, you just take it. Before. I like to make sure it's lying flat and then tie it in a knot, push it back up towards itself. That way you have the knot just there on the end and there you have your dream catcher. <laughs> Once you get to this point you can decide whether or not you want anything hanging. Um, I will add some hanging bits, you don't have to and generally you can do whatever you want with those as well. Sometimes people put feathers, they don't always put feathers though, so it's not necessary. Some people like to have a bunch of dangly things, you know, kind of like those bib style necklaces. Some people like to do the standard three, you can do two, you can do one, it's really up to you. And here we have it, this is our finished dream catcher. See, I have finished it down here. I have six feathers. And there it is. The stones. So that is how to make dream catchers. And I hope you enjoyed.